Good morning. You may have heard me talk in my video called I Love to Read about how I intend to begin reading The Witches to you on video a chapter a day uh, starting next week. So we started this book together when we were, um, when we were together in school, uh, trying to get through as much as we could, um, reading a little bit every day when we had time. Um, so since we got through about four chapters together, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little recap, a little review about what has happened so far. And it is a lot, so you don't want to miss this. All right, the very first chapter, chapter one, was called A Note About Witches. Uh, in this chapter, our main character, whose name we haven't been told, tells you all about real witches. Real witches dress in ordinary clothes and look very much like ordinary women. They live in ordinary houses and they work in ordinary jobs. And that is why they are so hard to catch. Talks about how uh, a real witch spends all her time plotting to get rid of all the children in her particular territory. And how does she get rid of them? It's a process called squelching, which we learn later is um, really any odd way that a witch can use her evil magical powers to get rid of a child. Which child, she says to herself all day long, exactly which child should I choose for my next squelching? One child a week is 52 a year. Squish them and squiggle them and make them disappear. <clears throat> we even are given a little bit of insight into how many witches you might see in your lifetime. For all you know, a witch might be living next door to you right now. Or she might be the woman with the bright eyes who sat opposite you on the bus this morning. She might be the lady with the dazzling smile who offered you a sweet from a white paper bag in the street before lunch. She might even, and this will make you jump, she might even be your lovely school teacher who is reading these words to you at this very moment. Chapter two uh, gives us some insight into the main character's grandmother who he goes to live with. Uh, he goes to live with his grandmother because his parents have recently died in a car accident. He doesn't share much about that event, but shares how um, he came with, together with his grandmother, which was his father's mother, and he went to live with her in Norway. So he had been living in England, and then he moved to Norway to be with his grandmother. Uh, and she originally told him that they would not be going back to England because she did not want to live in England. All right. And then his grandmother, because they live in Norway, feels it is very important to share with him everything that she knows about witches. Because in Norway, there are many, many witch witches that try to steal or squelch lots and lots of children. So the very first we hear of examples of witches tells us all about all of the children that his grandmother knew who were squelched. Five of them to be exact. We know that one child simply disappeared, walked off with a strange lady in the middle of the day. One child disappeared and reappeared in a painting in her parents' living room and was never seen outside of that painting again. Another child turned into a chicken and lived her rest of her days as a chicken. One child, very slowly, over the course of a day or two, turned to stone. And the last child turned into a porpoise while having a, su a summer day at the beach with his family. And then he swam away after the day was over and was never seen again. Uh, at the end of this chapter, our main character asks his grandmother, have you ever seen a witch? And she tells him, I saw one once, but she doesn't want to talk about what happened. The only information the main character can give us at this point, since he doesn't know what happened when his grandmother saw a witch either, is that he notices how she looks at the place where her thumb ought to be. One of her hands is missing a thumb. All right. 
Our third chapter is how to recognize a witch. And his grandmother shares with him awful things uh, about witches and how they are different from regular women, how you can recognize them, <clears throat> including details like a witch will always, always be wearing gloves. Why does she wear gloves, you ask? Because she has no fingernails and she has to hide her bare fingers. A witch will always be wearing a wig. Now, of course, it's a very good wig, so you can't necessarily tell, but the reason a witch is wearing a wig is because she is bald, has a hair on her head. Uh, and the only way that you might be able to tell that it's a wig is to notice if she's scratching her head a lot because the wigs are tend to be very itchy. Uh, another thing you might notice is that she has slightly big and bigger nostrils than your typical, uh, than your typical, typical woman. I feel like that one would be a little bit harder to spot, but, uh, his grandmother shares with him that the reason a witch has such big no nostrils is so that she can smell clean children. Uh, his grandmother insists that clean children have a very, uh, serious stench that only a witch can smell. And so it's suggested that he does not bathe very often so that the dirt and the smell of him having not bathed would cover up his natural child smell, at least until he becomes a bit older, and then she suggests that he start bathing often. Uh, she also mentions that uh, if you look deep into a witch's eyes, you'll see where you would see a black dot in the middle of her eye. That's the... <clears throat> That would be the pupil, you'll see fire and ice in the center of it. But of course, I think, I, I believe you'd have to get pretty close to someone to see if there was something in the middle of their pupil. Uh, also, she points out that witches do not have any toes. Their feet are just cut off at the end um, and flat at the end. Uh, and the very last thing that she shares is that witches have blue spit dark, dark blue, and thick like ink. In fact, they can write with it. All right, and that is where we leave off for chapter three. Our, the, the last chapter we read together was chapter four, in which uh, the main character and his grandmother are, um, are finally able to get a hold of his parents' will, um, which is a piece of paper, a, a legal document, saying what you want to happen to people um, that you care for, that what, what, what you want to happen to any of your possessions, all of your money, uh, after you pass away. So she fi they find his father's will, and his father will says specifically that he really wants his son to be raised in England. And so even though the grandmother doesn't want to, ra want to move to England, she agrees to move to England with her grandchild to fulfill her son's wishes. Uh, so they move to England together, and he notes that they, he is aware that there are less witches in England, but they are actually a lot scarier. At this point, our main character has not seen a witch before. So they move to, to England, and while they are living in England, uh, his grandmother shares with him a little bit, a few more details about witches, which is that um, the, all the witches have a witch's council. There's a witch's council for every country, and over all of them is the Grand High Witch. And once a year, they all come together at a meeting, uh, and, who and they talk about, well, who knows what. Um, but the Grand High Witch is in charge of all of them. And nobody knows who she is or where she lives, so they've never been able to catch her. Uh, and they know that when they meet, they pretend that it's some other normal kind of ladies meeting like a book club. Uh, so it's quite hard to track down those meetings since they look like an ordinary women's club meeting. Uh, and, our, and that fourth chapter finishes off with a little story about the very first time our main character sees a witch. And I believe he is uh, working on building a tree house in his, in his backyard. Uh, and a woman comes into his backyard and asks him to come down from the tree. And of course, his very first thought is, this is kind of odd. There's this random woman in my backyard. Uh, but he's young and maybe friendly. And so at first he starts to talk to her. 
and he gets to feel more and more concerned the more that he speaks with her. And she continually asks him to come down from the tree and even offers to let him play with her pet snake, who she says is very tame and very nice. But our main character is smarter than that. And he runs and climbs up the tree as far as he can get, and he stays there all day long till the witch has gone away. Finally, his grandmother comes out in the backyard looking for him. She's like, hey, aren't you going to come in for dinner? And she finds him so scared up in the top of the tree, just waiting for her to come rescue him. So she pulls him down. And she tells him that she does not want him playing by himself and outside anymore because she is so concerned about what might have happened had he, uh, had he come down from that tree. And that is where we left off. We read a little further into the fifth chapter, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start our videos, our chapter videos off with that fifth chapter so that you can get a little review of that as well and we can finish that off together. All right, I hope that uh, this jogged your memory. If you remembered anything that I didn't mention from having uh, told you this review of the book, please let me know um, and I'll try to cover that again before I start my next reading. All right, have a great day.